the Amazon, home of the greatest and most biodiverse forest and freshwater systems on Earth, provider of invaluable environmental services for the global climate and the well-being of humankind. A tree of rivers, according to John Hemming. Rivers that pulse in rhythm with the basin, its seasonal rainfall, and runoff from the encompassing highlands. More than 100,000 kilometers of streams that create, carry, and constantly transform the diversity of life in their surroundings. Like a human vascular system, this pulsing system of rivers cannot endure large-scale changes without compromising the system itself. Therefore, the rapid advance of the hydropower industry into the Amazon must be met with a comprehensive plan for the intelligent use of the entire biome. A plan that defines priority areas for conservation, whose survival is dependent on their connection to free-flowing rivers. The WWF calls this plan the integrated vision of the Amazon. But how do we define which areas need to be conserved or sustainably managed? We start with the reality that the most isolated sections of the Amazon have been studied the least. Those areas appear to have the poorest biodiversity because the data do not yet exist. To address this crucial information gap, a science team from the WWF Living Amazon Initiative spent more than four years building upon the global hydroshed database. We developed the His Ara, the Hydrological Information System for Amazon River Assessment. This system integrates ecological and hydrological statistics and creates a picture of the entire Amazon in detail down to the smallest watershed. With the information for thousands of microbasins in hand, we began to create a model. In the Madre de Deus Basin in Peru, the WWF team crossed information on slope, runoff and river discharge with vegetation and watershed and we were able to define the heterogeneity of the aquatic systems there and to classify the rivers by segments. These results provided a foundation for a reliable set of surrogate models. From here, the WWF was able to expand this concept to the entire Amazon basin. Using a similar approach with data kindly provided by the Nature Conservancy, the WWF was able to assess the heterogeneity of the basin's terrestrial landscapes. At this point, we had our conservation targets. But how to apply this in the real world? Preserving biodiversity in the biome means we must conserve the greatest variety of aquatic and terrestrial ecosystems. We need to guarantee a comprehensive representation of diversity, but we must also take into account efficiency, complementarity, resilience, and vulnerability. We next looked at land that is already protected by law and land that is at risk. The existing system of protected areas in indigenous territories were defined as opportunities for conservation. Precedence was given to areas already grouped together. Information from a study developed by EPOM, the Woods Hole Institute, and the University of Minas Gerais that estimates risks of deforestation for 2005 through 2050 was computed as a cost factor. Next, by cross-referencing maps of human activity, we created a composite ecological risk index to estimate freshwater vulnerability. Finally, we used this information to define a conservation target a number that can be used in future dialogue about conservation and the use of the Amazon Basin. That conservation target is 30% for each system. We now have all the inputs to run the model. Two maps illustrate the results. One map shows which specific ecosystems would be irreplaceable were they to be lost. And the other map identifies which aquatic and terrestrial systems can and should be sustainably managed or conserved in order to preserve the biodiversity of the whole biome. This map reveals something equally vital, the river segments that should be kept free-flowing in order to keep these areas connected to the main artery, the Amazon River. The model output is not a definitive solution in the struggle to make use of and protect the Amazon, but it is a tool to promote both dialogue and better informed decision-making among all stakeholders and to create shared goals that support the people, the diverse life, and the future of the Amazon. <laughs>